All right, how's everybody doing today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to find the exact values of the six trig functions using x, y, and r. Now, the six trig functions using x, y, and r are going to come from a triangle that is drawn with theta closest to the origin. Now, x, that pretty much makes sense because that's going to be your x coordinate. y would be the height of your right triangle, and r is going to represent the radius if we're dealing with a circle, but also the hypotenuse. And just like geometry, remember back when you found a missing side, you had to use Pythagorean theorem? Well, we'll do that same thing here, but you might have to use x squared plus y squared equals r squared to find a missing piece if we're given only two of those three variables. Now going back to geometry again, if we just kind of think about it, sine was opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case is y over r. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is x over r, and then tangent, of course, would just be y over x. Now cosecant, secant, and cotangent, they're just the reciprocals of sine, cos, and tangent. So you could find those very quickly by just taking the reciprocal of each one of those. That's all you've got to do when you work with the six trig functions involving x, y, and r to find missing sides or to set up trig ratios. So let's go ahead and practice a couple of examples. Now here in our first example, we've got to find the exact values for the six trig functions, and we're given all this information here about sine and cosine. Now in the beginning, it's really, really helpful to write down x, y, and r off to the side like that, and then also when you take a look at setting up your trig ratios, go ahead and write down everything we just had on the previous slide. So now when we write down those six ratios using the letters x, y, and r, we can kind of pick everything apart from the information that we're given. In the beginning, sine theta, we're given 21 over 7, square root of 21 over 7, so I know my y is going to be square root of 21, and 7 is going to represent my radius. Now for cosine, that's going to be x over r. My x is just going to be negative 2 square roots of 7. So I've got all the information I need right there to go ahead and set up all the trig ratios that I've got. So go ahead and hit pause and just set up your trig ratios. Yes, you're going to have to do some rationalizing on some of this, but I think you guys can handle it. So go ahead and hit pause and then see how you did. So after you go ahead and rationalize everything, these are the answers that you should come up with. But what I want to do real quickly is go over the answer for tangent of theta. So tangent of theta, you end up with a square root of 21 over negative 2 square root of 7. And when you go through that process to rationalize all that, oh my goodness gracious, by the time you're all done, you end up with square root of 3 over negative Two. There's another approach that I want to show you guys to this, and maybe this will bring you back to some of your earlier algebra days, where you could take that square root of 21 over negative 2 roots of 7 that you started out with, and you can break that up to negative 1 half times square root of 21 over square root of 7. But there's a property from algebra where if you have both the numerator and the denominator in a square root, you can simplify that to be the square root and then just put them both underneath the square root. So then when you simplify 21 over 7, well that's just 3. So finally we'll end up with negative 1 half times the square root of 3, which when you combine that you'll just end up with negative root 3 over 2. So those are both the short way, which is on the left, and the long way, which is on the right, to go ahead and rationalize all of that. And that's a lot of work to do. I know it's a lot of rationalizing, but you guys can handle it. Now for people who are a little bit more visual, there's a totally other approach that you could have done to this, and that's just going ahead and drawing a, a triangle to represent the situation. Now what you have to remember is that sine, you want sine to be positive. So I'm going to make sine x and then cosine, I'm going to make that o's. Now any quadrant, so we're going to go in the lower left hand corner here. Any quadrant where sine is positive, I'm going to put an x, so that would be in quadrant 2, and of course everything's positive in quadrant 1. Cosine is going to be negative in quadrant number 2 as well as quadrant number 3. So if I were to draw a triangle to represent this given information, my triangle would have to be here in quadrant number 2. 
So I'm going to go ahead and draw that, just kind of a rough sketch of that. So I'd have a right triangle. Now I know my x coordinate is negative 2 squared to 7, and my y coordinate is square root of 21, and then my radius is going to be 7. So I could go ahead and make a right triangle that way and fill in my trig ratios if you're more comfortable with that. You've got to decide which one is a, whichever one is more efficient for you. Either way, you'll end up with the same six values for your six trig functions. So this is one example. We've got two more we're going to play with, so let's go ahead and try the next one. So here we've got sine theta is negative one fourth. So that tells me my y and my r. So my y core, my y value is going to be negative one and my r is going to be four. Now the reason four is the positive one because your radius always has to be positive. So that's why the one is the negative value. Now cosine, to get cosine, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. One of them is using Pythagorean theorem. So you could use x squared plus y squared equals r squared and then when you substitute everything in, x, we don't have anything to put in for that, but y squared, well, I know that that's negative 1, and r has a value of 4. So when I square each of these, I'll end up with x squared plus 1 equals 16. And when we do all our arithmetic, we'll get x squared equals 15. And last but not least, so let me go up here, we're going to have x equals plus or minus the square root of 15. Now, I've got two answers. Which one do I use? Sometimes it's helpful when we go to our go to our quadrants again, because if I take a look at sine, sine has to be negative. So again, I'm going to put an x anywhere sine is going to be negative, and sine is going to be negative here in quadrant 3, as well as in quadrant number 4. Now, I want cosine to be greater than 0, which means cosine is going to be positive in quadrant 1 and 2. So the, tri the value of x that I want, whether I'm in quadrant 1 or 2, since that has to be positive, if I were to draw a triangle in one of those two quadrants, that would have to be positive 15. So my value for x is going to be positive the square root of 15. Now that I've got that, I can go ahead and either set up my trig ratios using x, y, and r. So sine would be y over r, cosine is x over r, tangent is y over x, and then cosecant, of course, is going to be r over y, secant is r over x, and cotangent is going to be x over y. So you've got all the information you need, so go ahead and figure out what those six trig functions are. All right, so how'd you guys do with this one? Did you get negative 1 fourth for sine? Root 15 over 4 for cosine? Tangent ends up being negative root 15 over 15 when you rationalize. Cosecant's negative 4 and secant is 4 roots of 15 over 15, and cotangent is negative square root of 15. Hopefully, you got all six of those right. But wait, we've got one more example, so let's go ahead and try this one. Now here, cotangent is 7 thirds, and sine has got to be less than 0, or sine's got to be negative. Go ahead and fill in as much information as you can on x, y, and r. And in fact, I think you could probably do this whole problem on your own by now. So go ahead, get after it, and let's see what you come up with. Now check this one out. How'd you do with the setup? Because the setup is key, and that's where most people will probably make a mistake on that. Initially, a lot of people have the error, and they'll say x is going to be positive 7, y is going to be positive 3, but... If you look at this critically and carefully, that is not the case because if you draw the triangle that meets the conditions of cotangent being positive and sine being negative, the only quadrant that that happens in is in quadrant number three. And you can see here in quadrant number three, of course, both your x and your y coordinates are going to be negative, which means you're going to have negative 7 for the x and negative 3 for the y. That's the part that's a little bit tricky on this one. Once you get everything else set up, I'm sure you're fine with finding the square root of 58 for the value of r, but the main thing was getting the value of x and y correct. Once you have all of those pieces sorted out, the rest of it is going to be pretty straightforward. Hopefully, you didn't fall for that careless mistake and you're able to get this one done correctly. But if you did make that mistake, no worries. It's a common one and people will sit there and when you analyze a little bit more, 
I'm sure you won't make that mistake again. All right, now that you've come to the end of this video, I'm sure you can find the exact values of any of the tr six trig functions if you're given information about x, y, and r. Thanks for watching, and you guys have a great day. Peace out.